Here's another piece of technology that I bought from eBay, used, refurbished. <laughs> I'm taking this video seriously, so seriously that I'm printing notes on a duplex piece of paper in my LaserJet 4300 DTN or something like that. Wow, wow guys. So I just posted a video that got more views in eight days than everything else on my channel pretty much combined in years almost. Uh, 120,000 or something views in eight days, that's just insane for me because, yeah, we'll get to that later. But I wanna respond and kinda follow up some more information and, and kinda hit this. So, so my Microsoft Surface, this thing right here, uh, which is now in a case, uh, has been a very useful machine for me for many years, and it was recently locked by MasterCard. Like, almost anything I need to know about, you can find it online. Like, there's almost every bit of information is available online, but I could find almost nothing about this online. Like, I couldn't find hardly anything about somebody's laptop or tablet being locked by a corporation that might have previously owned it, okay? so. Uh, that was a mystery like that was surprising to me that I could not find any information so anyway here let me go over some some I made notes here let me go over a few things okay first off so many people say well you bought a stolen device you bought a stolen device well listen the eBay seller when I bought right now and, and it's pretty similar when I bought this years ago they have 127 thousand cells 99 percent positive uh, 99.4 percent positive. They specialize in ITAD, which stands for Information Technology Asset Disposition, which essentially is e-recycling to try to keep this stuff out of landfills when corporations are done with it, so they don't just like melt it down, throw it away. So they make sure it's safe and get it out there. Okay. The seller, much to my surprise, very promptly responded when I sent them a message through Facebook, uh, through eBay about my four-year-old purchase. I did not expect that. I I would have done that first first thing, but it didn't occur to me because I'm like, I bought it four years ago. They're not going to do anything for me. But they, they requested the serial number, and then very soon, like one day later, they got back to me and they said uh, they had addressed the issue and they provided me with an unlock code that would free up the device if it was still locked and they told me I shouldn't have a problem but to get back to them if I did have a problem. So that blew my mind. I did not expect anything from, from them. This is Lynx Tech, uh, which is, uh, I have great respect for them because they had no real need to respond to me. This eBay sale is old. Okay, so before, uh, a lot of people say, well, you should just install Windows again. Well, that was obviously the first thing I did. I mean, I've been around at this for a while. You, I, I, I literally, reinstalled Windows XP so many times that I knew the product key, like, you know, in my head. I had the product key memorized for reinstalling it a million times, you know, from all the pirating games I used to do. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I reinstalled Windows from a clean standard ISO uh, USB stick, um, and both times, I did it twice, and both times, as soon as it got online, it locked up. And the second time, I found some, the, hardly the only thing, I mean, I found like two things online about this, and one of them was some instructions I found on Reddit about de deleting some CompuTrace files and then remaking them uh, in, in Notepad and making them uh, read-only. I tried that, it didn't work. And uh, I did that, you know, without internet, and as soon as it connected to the internet, boom, locked again, okay? so. After my video, a person who claimed to work at MasterCard emailed and offered to help. They provided me with the correct email for uh, to contact asset management at MasterCard, which is different from the, it was different email from what popped up on my screen, on the lock screen. Uh, this person was very friendly and they offered, they had pretty good knowledge about the situation and they wanted me to contact asset recovery and get help. Now I haven't done that yet. I might still contact them just to see if that email works. They also, uh, you know, were willing to help in a few other ways if I would give them my serial number. I didn't. I I think they might, you know, I mean, I don't know if this person's legit, but they, they, they seem legit, but I wasn't going to give them my serial number. Um, so, since I had an unlock code and since this eBay seller said they were going to help, I went ahead and I uh, figured out how to uh, boot up a live Linux distro Ubuntu live, the install uh, ISO USB worked for that, and I was able to partition off some space for Windows, and I installed Windows, and believe it or not, it didn't freeze. So 
Um, I, I, I assume that the uh, freeze has been lifted, the lock has been lifted, or maybe somehow since it's got, uh, a, I don't know, the partition that are different, I don't know how that would matter because, you know, like right now it's just, it's not even dual booting, it's just going straight to Windows since um, Windows doesn't want to dual boot. If I want to dual boot it, apparently I have to do something with something called Grub. I don't know, uh, not gonna probably, I, I am probably gonna do that. I could also, I guess, just choose to boot order from the UEFI or whatever, but okay. So uh, yeah, so now I'm running Windows and um, it, it, it seems to be fine. So I can uh, use it and you know, so far it hasn't locked up. You know, I, I got I got it working. Uh, I lost some files, but honestly, not that much. So you know, wasn't that big of a deal. So I want to just let's let's some thoughts here. Some thoughts on Linux Surface. So first off, it's amazing. It worked incredibly well. It was really pretty easy to do. Um, I I think a lot of the problems I had getting the installs to work were probably my fault. Um, I I don't I, many of them I tried. I tried several. People were like, "Why did you try this one?" Oh, I tried Mint. I tried I tried a bunch of them, and uh, and like I don't even know the names of them. I was just trying them. I tried like the Ubuntu. I tried was the fourth one. I started with Red Hat, and that one. But these things they didn't you know. And there's a lot of information if you look it up. You'll find that uh, Microsoft Surface would used to boot and install and then they changed some things in the firmware and it wasn't doing it so well. Okay, so anyway, once I got Ubuntu running and you know I spent some time with it. Oh shh, 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 shh. okay. Once I got Ubuntu running and I spent some time with it, uh it, it wasn't perfect. One of the things that bothered me is that it would flicker the brightness because it was like always uh, and there's probably an easy way to turn this off, but like the brightness the camera would like, I guess, you know, in a darker room, and if, even if my hand kind of brushed across the top of the bezel there, uh, it would start flickering a little bit. There's probably a way to turn that off. I'm sure that's a setting. That's, that's on me. Um, this was annoying. I wanted to use Krita for painting and it wouldn't install. It, it installed, but it wouldn't run. It just kept crashing. Um, tried a couple times. Multi-touch and the stylus were excellent though. I, I installed GIMP and I played around with that. Uh, I didn't really like it very much because I'm used to Photoshop and uh, I, I didn't spend hardly any time on it. So it could be great. It could be the best software ever and I didn't spend enough time using it. I've always wanted to try it, but after a few minutes I was like, okay, I need to learn this and then I, I probably will never will. Um, the on-screen keyboard was really small. This has a really great on, on the, the Surface, the, the built-in one, uh, I guess for Microsoft in tablet mode or whatever. It's a great on-screen keyboard. Uh, it's really easy to type on. That's probably not a big deal. I mean, I, yeah. And I wanted to use uh, Autodesk Sketchbook, which is one of my all-time favorite drawing programs. Old, it's discontinued now, but the install um, for Windows is great. And that would not, you know, since it's for Windows, they don't have a Linux version of that. All right. So anyway, some final thoughts on my video blowing up. I just, this is just, you know, I just don't take YouTube seriously. Like I never have. Like I don't really, like I'm, I, I don't consider myself a content creator. I've just made videos for fun for a while. Uh, I've been posting videos for eight years and I don't think I've ever said smash that like button. I don't say like and subscribe because honestly, I don't care. Like I, I don't want to make money off this. I don't monetize. I, I don't like, I have no real illusions of grandeur that I'm more important or that people need to watch me. I just enjoy making videos. And if you know, somebody is uh, on the same wavelength or, or not or whatever, I like, I like, I like the, the video communication aspect of it. Um, my videos, I've had a handful with a few thousand, you know, I've got some camera reviews, bike reviews and some, you know, things. Uh, generally, the, the videos I've made that might help somebody solve a problem have always been the more popular one or help somebody make a decision. Um, I'm not looking to be a star on YouTube. I just like to post videos. So this thing blowing up just kind of blew my mind. Um, I had no expectation of it. I mean, to me, it was just an interesting, funny story. I didn't do nothing to promote it. I didn't post it. I never post my, I don't even post, I don't post any videos anywhere. I just post them on YouTube and I'm like, there it is. And if people find it, I guess people found it. And, and yeah, I saw it on Reddit. I didn't post it on Reddit. Somebody posted it on Reddit. I saw it floating around, you know, so I was like, wow, that's crazy. Uh, comments. I've always loved getting comments on videos. It's always really made my day when I see comments because like, I'm like, somebody cared enough about my video to comment on it. 
And usually, you know, a lot of times people asking a question or maybe thanking me or or providing me some more information. I love comments. I've always been excited. I'm like, ooh, YouTube comments, sweet. Well, this is almost like the opposite now. I mean, I've had so many comments and there were so many cool ones. There were so many cool reactions. There were so many like uh, positive reactions, so many uh, supportive and just genuinely helpful comments. There was a lot of really cool people trying to help. Uh, there were some negative ones. A um, couple that were just like, I was like, oh, wow, you must be having a really bad day. You must be a really sad, hateful person. But here's the crazy thing. Every comment makes the video, you know, I mean, you may hate a video, so you comment on it. And guess what? You just promoted it. You're promoting something, you know, if you, if anyone, so it's going to get shown more comments, you know, are a great way to promote a video. So obviously, yeah, thank you for the negative comments. Thank you for the positive comments. Um, and honestly, most of them were positive, which blows my mind. I'm surprised there's not more hateful people out there on YouTube. Uh, I've got more subscriptions uh, in eight days than I've had in years. Like, I think I went from like 1,100 to like 1,600 subscriptions or something. That's insane. Um, I don't plan to make any more Linux content, to be honest with you, but I do want to keep exploring it, and I might. But uh, there's people out there, like several of the comments did say, I don't, I, this isn't my wheelhouse, you know? Uh, I, the, the reason I posted a video is because there's nothing, there's almost nothing out there about this. I'm sure this has happened to other people uh, who don't buy, you know, I didn't buy this laptop from some shady dude, you know, this is like a reputable company, and this shouldn't have happened, so somebody made a mistake. Um, I don't know if it was, I, I'm assuming it's MasterCard since it happened four years after I bought it. So, I mean, I'm trying to, the reason I made a video, I'm trying to help people that this could happen to. And, uh, and I, and I wanted to share this interesting story. Um, I definitely, you know, a lot of my comments were about how huge MasterCard is, uh, and how, you know, they're this built multi-billion dollar company and blah, blah, blah. It wouldn't really matter if it's a tiny company or big company. It, it, it really, that was kind of silly to me. It doesn't matter if you buy something from a reputable seller and later it becomes not really yours anymore. That's a problem with technology. Um, you know, if I bought this from some shady stolen hacker dude, it probably would have went, boom, this isn't your property the next day. And that would be my fault, but I didn't. So it's not my fault, you know, and, and it's not other people's fault that this has happened to, and I'm sure it's happened to other people. Okay, guys, that being said, thanks for following along. Appreciate it. <laughs> Smash that like button or whatever, I don't care.